When we look at disc golf, we see the sport, especially the pro scene, as being pretty top heavy. A lot of the same guys win most of the tournaments, at least until this year. So for these main guys like Macbeth and Wysocki and Eagle, they have so many good moments out there that kind of drowns them out. Today we're going to look in depth at a player who most of you only know from one event, and that's James Conrad. James has actually been around a lot longer than most people know. He's been a top level pro ever since his first big breakout year in 2016. Since then, James has had some really insane moments. I've already hinted at it. Most of the world saw James throw in at Worlds in 2021. This is by far his best moment, and maybe the best moment ever in disc golf, but James has plenty of other stuff we're gonna look at. Today, we have got all of Conrad's aces, some of his funniest moments, and his best wins on tour. Let's see how much of this player you guys really know. Let's hop right into it. The best moments of James Conrad. Here we go. We gotta check out James Conrad's aces, and we're gonna do this a little differently. We're going to work our way back from James' shortest ace to his longest ace. Now James has quite a few, so this is going to be good. We've got a couple regular tournament aces and one that is world championship level. Here we go. Thank you. All. I'm guessing he's gonna stall it. Yeah, he's going wow. stall over the tree. Look how flat that is. It's got to crash. No way. Go in there. <gasps> no. No chains required. That's an ace from Conrad. Now, before finishing up on the aces, I wanted to show you guys one of James' aces that isn't quite an ace. Pretty much the closest thing to an ace that isn't one. In 2020 at USDGC, Connor was playing a practice round. This shot happened with his second disc on the 16th hole, par 3. Check it out. Oh! I think I just black aced the short, the short pin. That's the ladies, ladies basket. I think I hit a tree beyond it and kicked back into it. That's, that's pretty funny. <laughs> James is one of the most unique characters that we get to see out on tour. He's very calm and zen, and that's how he plays as well. He has plenty of funny moments, lots of videos out there of him punching things very gently or quote unquote getting upset. Meanwhile, it's just him like slapping a branch. Let's just say he's no Nico LaCastro. Now Conrad has this super long run up and then he kind of overextends after the tee pad. Well, this one time it bit him in the butt, literally, check it out. Warning, this may be a little graphic for a disc golf video. Got away from him, right in the basket, I'm guessing. Oh no! Oh, wow. That's the second time he's fallen. Oh! Oh Ouch. gosh, you hate to see that. Before we dive into some of James' best tournaments, we're gonna take a look at one attribute that Conrad lacks. You guys have already seen Conrad throw, and he throws a lot of backhands. Actually, he only throws backhands. He really only ever throws a forehand to get out of trouble. This means Conrad throws a lot of turnover shots. In order for him to be successful, that part of his game needs to be on point. Well, for this segment, we're going to look at the very few times Conrad has actually thrown a forehand. There is, but there's a hole that forces it. It's, it's this one. Putting a good move on it, but a little hot. Probably be about circles edge. Early and, and been in a world of trouble. Uh, this is the unicorn sidearm from. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, why is it so unicorn? That was butter. That was beautiful. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. Skip, skip. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Let's go. What? What How that's <laughs> Annie skip? That it was know. nose down on Anheuser <laughs> and it just skips. Now Conrad had really popped onto the scene in 2016, but he didn't get his first win until the following year. The 2017 Des Moines Challenge was not a part of the Disc Golf Pro Tour yet, but it still was a decent sized event. 
The Des Moines Challenge has been held at Picker Park for the last few years. That's probably where most of you guys recognize it, but it wasn't always held there. In 2017, it was at Walnut Ridge. Now I've played there so I can give a bit of an insight into how the course actually is. It's a pretty solid combination of open holes and tight wooded holes. The first few holes and the finishing stretch are all pretty open so if you can survive the woods you should be able to hold your own. And James Conrad did just that. Going into the final round Conrad was down two shots to AJ Risley but that wasn't the guy he would end up battling with. On the chase card was Terry Roethlisberger. He was only three shots back to start the day so it wasn't like he came out of nowhere but he did play really well. We go to the final hole. Conrad has played really well all day. Terry is already in the clubhouse tied with Conrad. If Conrad makes this putt, the tournament is his. After skipping off the top of the basket, Conrad would still make par. We go to a sudden death playoff. The first hole would be just a little turnover shot. Both players would throw great drives. Terry making his putt for birdie first, leaving all the pressure on Conrad to continue the playoff. The second playoff hole is a huge turnover shot, both players launching it into the sky and letting it fall into the trees. Conrad would be in the better position after the drives, Terry would hit low on the basket on his putt, Conrad with another chance to finish the tournament. The next hole doesn't look super uphill but trust me this shot is incredibly hard, it's very elevated and you're basically running uphill on your drive. This happened to Terry on his drive. This was Conrad's chance to close it out, and he did, throwing a great shot that would go just past the basket. Big playoff win for Conrad. This would help establish him as a top player moving forward. Now up to this point, Conrad had only won a few A-tier events. The Disc Golf Pro Tour has been established and was running some really solid events by the time Conrad had been on tour. But he had yet to establish himself with that big win, which could show he could hang with the big boys on tour. Des Moines was a solid win, but it wasn't a Pro Tour win. The 2018 MVP Open helped Conrad make that statement. He didn't sniff the lead after the first round. Conrad would only shoot three under, five back of the lead. Round two would go much better for him, Conrad shooting eight under, getting him to 11 under in total starting the final round. But ahead of him was Ricky Wysocki and Paul McBeth. Ricky had just shot 13 under par in round two and McBeth was playing really solid for the tournament. Ricky wouldn't be able to keep the momentum going. It would just come down to McBeth versus Conrad. Conrad would start out hot, and I mean really hot, shooting six under on the front nine to claim the lead. One shot lead over Macbeth with nine to play, and still Conrad would continue to play well. We step up to hole 14, just five holes to play, and Conrad has a three shot lead over Macbeth. Tough par three downhill over water, Macbeth would put it close, looking at an easy birdie. Conrad would play safe, staying away from the water. Here's his outside circle putt for birdie. James is going for this. This is a big moment. Oh, man. After Conrad makes bogey, Macbeth would make his birdie putt, and only down by one shot with four holes to play. Hole 15, Macbeth's drive would come out of his hand early. He takes a really bad tree kick, looking at scrambling just to save par. Conrad would lace the tight par three, making the shot look so easy he makes birdie while Macbeth saves his par. Back to a two-shot lead, but not for long. The very next hole, the incredibly tough par 316, Conrad would scramble to make his par. Meanwhile, this was Macbeth's putt for birdie, he needs this to stay in the hunt. 17, they would both make birdies. Now just down to one more hole, can Conrad hold on with his one shot lead? The par 4 18th always makes for a fun ending. The tight green with OB surrounding it always makes for drama, and it would happen again this year. Macbeth's drive fades out early, he's out of position already. Conrad going second would do the same, he would also be out of position. Macbeth throws a turnover shot just to get himself within range of a jump putt. Hey look, it's a Conrad forehand. He lays up a little further back, having to throw a touchy little shot just to secure the par. Here's Macbeth's putt to force a playoff. <laughs> After battling all day and shooting 11 under, Conrad would earn his first Disc Golf Pro Tour win. Beating the likes of Macbeth and Wysocki and Heiberg, he would now be established as a top player. Conrad would keep his momentum going from the MVP Open into the United States Disc Golf Championship. He would battle it out with Macbeth again, but no one was beating Macbeth that day. Conrad would take home second place, his best finish at a major. We jump one year ahead to the 2019 USDGC, 
Conard would show up again. This time, he would take the lead, making everyone else chase him. And the players to challenge him wouldn't even be on his card. Nico LaCastro, Jeremy Colling, and Chris Clemens would be the guys to challenge Conrad. But even still, Conrad could coast, and he did. He had such a big lead that making pars was good enough, and he made plenty of them. Only shooting two under on the front, he would start to coast on the back nine. But like I've said probably a million times, for USDGC, it's never over until you walk off hole 17. So we step up to the tee with Conrad. He's at 23 under. The closest players to him were Nico and Chris. Chris is at 22 under, and Nico's at 21. 17 would be both players' demise, Clemens taking an 8, and Nico taking a 5. Now Nico's at 19 under, Clemens is out of the picture, he's at 17 under. Jeremy Colling in a group further up had made birdie on 17, getting himself to 18 under. So Conrad's got a 4 shot lead over Nico and 5 on Colling. Here's Conrad on the tee. I always caught an early leaf and that usually means disaster. Sure enough, well short. Uh, third shot here. Bogey at best unless he can throw it in. Looks like he's turned that one over and if the wind beats on it like it normally does when you turn it over, it, you want to win this? Let's put it on the green here. This is James Conrad. If he can't get on the island here, he could be in big trouble. Oh, by less than so after making the island on his third attempt, Conrad would miss the putt, taking a seven. That's four over par, and just like that, Conrad's lead is no more. One hole to play, Coling in the clubhouse at 18 under, and Nico on the final hole at 19 under. Now something happened on 18 for Nico, and it wasn't good. He knew sort of what was going on 17 with Conrad. Nico's drive was not the best for 18, so he chose to lay up make the par, stay at 19 under, and make Conrad birdie the hard 18th to win the tournament. On Nico's layup, he turned it over just a bit, barely going out of bounds. In regards to his reaction, he took it really well. He just kind of shrugged it off and went up to his shot, got up and down for bogey, and waited. Nico finished at 18 under, Coling also at 18 under. Conrad on the tee on 18 with a one-shot lead. Safe putter turnover shot, Conrad is in the fairway, but quite a ways back. We get this awesome look of Big Germ and Nico waiting and watching Conrad on his way up the 18th hole. All the pressure's on Conrad, pretty much the same layup shot that Nico had to hit. It's tied up there with Obi on the right and Treeline on the left. This is the shot that really matters. He is at 17. He's eliminated from the potential playoff scenario. James has to have this find in bounds. After keeping it in bounds, the layup jump putt was inevitable. No matter what you say, any putt to win a championship is going to make you nervous. Doesn't matter how close you are. Conrad would settle down after making a quadruple bogey on the 17th, and he would make this putt and win his first major title. Let the celebrations begin. In the offseason of 2021, some companies made some pretty big moves. James Conrad was involved in one of those moves. After being with Innovuk for quite some time, Conrad took his talents elsewhere, to MVP discs. They had yet to sign a really big player. They did have some solid people on board, but this is the signing that really put them on the map in regards to the pro level. At the time, there was a lot of questions in regard to this move. Was Conrad a big enough name to be the face of a company? Could he carry enough for one company to put so much stock in him? Well, it turns out this is one of the best moves in disc golf, but it would take some months for it to really pay off. In June, just six months after the signing, Conrad would earn his keep with MVP. One shot would lead to a company producing an incredible amount of discs. Just one shot. One simple shot that we've already seen Conrad do time and time again. At USDGC, he would throw these simple putter turnover shots. At MVP, he could lace putters exactly where he needed them to be. So when the time came for Conrad to throw a turnover putter shot to force a playoff at the 2021 World Championship, he pulled it off. A shot we've seen him do plenty of times. Because of this shot, MVP went nuts in production. The Envy, the putter that Conrad threw, would explode in sales, all because of this shot. Now I've already covered exactly how Conrad won this world championship in another video of mine, so make sure you go check that out. This is obviously Conrad's best moment. It's one of the best moments in disc golf, so it's going to be included, but I wanted to show a different side to it. Yes, he threw a great shot, and yes, he won the playoff, and yes, he played the tournament as a whole incredibly well, but that's what a lot of people see. What they don't see in the sport is the risk companies take. MVP was and still isn't a big name in disc golf. Not compared to Discraft, Innova, and Trilogy. MVP was in that sort of B-tier disc golf companies, but because of this shot by Conrad, they were put on the map, and now I consider them a top disc golf company. They aren't the biggest company out there, but they still earned a spot at the table because of what Conrad was able to do with just one shot. That's his best moment. It's not because he won a world title or because he beat Paul Macbeth. No, it's because he proved a lot of people wrong. 
Conrad was able to be the face of a disc golf company, and now when you think of MVP, you think of Conrad, James Conrad, and you think of this shot. Thanks for watching guys. As always, make sure to go check out my channel if you like this video. I've got plenty of other videos just like this one. Make sure to like and subscribe. Don't forget to comment down below any of your favorite James Conrad moments, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.